So in some sense, there is a call to action within people. Now, you know, in any sort of quest story, like The Hobbit, let's say, um, or The Lord of the Rings, for that matter, you know, the story always starts with, with a call to action, right? For some reason or another, the little Hobbit character, which, by the way, is you, you know, the Hobbits live in this little protected place, and they're not very big, and they're not very smart, and they don't know about the wide world beyond them where the great forces of good and evil are at combat, and one Hobbit, who's a little bit more adventurous than the rest, gets called to act, gets called upon to act, and in, in the Hobbit stories, it's usually the wizard who manages it, right? So it's a magical figure of some sort who's extraordinarily wise and extraordinarily old, who might as well be God for all intents and purposes, who says, you know, it's time for you to go and become a thief. Be well, that's what happens in the Hobbit, right? It's a very weird thing, because obviously that's Frodo, right? Frodo's the Hobbit. In, in The Hobbit, and Bilbo's the Hobbit in The Lord of the Rings, if I remember no, correctly. Other way around? Bilbo is the Hobbit in The Hobbit. Fine, Bilbo. Okay. So Bilbo gets called to action, and he's going to go find a dragon. Well, the dragon is the same thing that swallowed Job. It's the same story. And the, and the dragon has a treasure, which is a weird thing. It's like, what's up with dragons, right? What do they hoard? Virgins. That's the St. George story. It's a very, very old story. Or gold, and that's weird behavior for a predatory lizard. But anyways, you accept that without any problem. Of course a dragon lives underground in a big mountain that was excavated by dwarves and sits on a treasure. It's like, we, go to, we don't have any problem with that idea. Well, why? Think, I mean, really? You really believe that? And the answer is, well, well enough to read the damn book and to make the... I mean, how many people went and watched The Lord of the Rings? How many people... And think about it worldwide. How much money did... Uh, Harry Potter generate. You know, I bet you Harry Potter generated more money than the remaining steel mills in Britain, if you calculated it across the, the amount of time since those stories emerged. Right? So, of course, there's a lizard in, a uh, predatory lizard in Harry Potter, too. It's the thing that skitters around underneath Hogwarts and turns you to stone with the glance of an eye. Oh, and does that lizard hoard virgins? Well, what's the name of the woman, that the girl that he uh, kidnaps? Ginny. Right, okay. What's the word Ginny from? Virginia. Right? <laughs> Good. Good. Right. And he, she's Harry's first love interest, and he, he rescues her from the damn snake. And he gets paralyzed, well, paralyzed with it while he's doing it. What rescues Harry? Phoenix. Right? A phoenix. Okay, so the basilisk bites Harry, and so he's going to die. The phoenix comes along. Who owns the phoenix? Dumbledore. Yeah, yeah. What does the phoenix do? Cries. And it cries into Harry's wounds. Yes? And what happens? Then what happens to Harry? He comes back to life. It's a res death and resurrection story. So the thing that's willing to die and resurrect is the thing that gets the virgin from the snake. It's like, does that make sense? Well, you think it makes sense, even though you don't really know why it makes sense. And then what happens to the, what happens to the phoenix after it does that? It burns itself up in, in a puff of flame and is reborn. So it's the story told twice. The thing that dies and is reborn is the thing that conquers the, the serpent and, and, and rescues the feminine, roughly speaking. So it's not gold in that situation, but... It doesn't matter. It's the same story. It's always the same story. So, and, and when you don't hear that story, like when your culture isn't providing you with rich stories of that sort that are derived directly from your tradition, somebody like an unemployed welfare mother in Britain has it pop up full-fledged in her brilliant imagination and lays out seven books and makes herself more money than the queen. <laughs> right, right. And that, you know, it's a Cinderella story. It's a bloody amazing story. And then there's all those books, and all those kids learn to read because of the books. And then there's all those movies, and everybody goes and sees them. And no one notices that they don't know what the hell they're doing while they're doing it. And it follows the same old story.